Hello and welcome to Grove United Methodist Church. We are here in one of the gardens on this Easter Sunday. We're about to travel to another garden where they bury people. I heard that something strange has happened there this morning. I'm a little bit afraid, but I have an idea. Let you and I go together and then maybe we won't be so afraid. Let's go find out what's happening.
please join me in prayer, followed by our scripture reading, which is Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, you sent Jesus into the world to suffer, die, and rise again for our sake. Help us to experience your transforming resurrection power within our hearts, lives, and ministry. We offer our prayers in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene married the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they could go and anoint Jesus' dead body. Very early on, the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to each other, who's going to roll the stone away from the entrance for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, and it was a very large stone. Going into the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right side, and they were startled. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He isn't here. Look, here's the place where they laid him. Go tell his disciples, especially Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. Overcome with terror and dread, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey, Scooter. Hi, Sam. Hey, Scooter, I have a question for you. What's that? Well, Scooter, have you ever had good news that you wanted to tell somebody? Yeah, I have good news right now, actually. But I'm afraid sometimes to tell people good things that I've seen or good things that happened to me. But I don't know. Well, Scooter, you should never be afraid to tell somebody something good. Like the two Marys, they were afraid when they knew that Jesus had risen from the dead. But that's something good. And that's something incredible that has happened. So if something good or incredible happens, you should share it with everyone. I guess that's true, Sam. Thank you so much for giving me the encouragement to share good news with everyone. You're welcome, Scooter. Happy Easter. Today we shout, he is risen. He is risen indeed words that we proclaim with great joy on this Easter day. We always do. Even though earlier those of us who were up for sunrise may have looked through blearied eyes and disheveled hair, we still shout, He is risen. He is risen indeed. It was not this way on that first Easter morning, according to the Gospel writer of Mark, the earliest to pen the good news of our risen Savior. If you have read Mark's gospel, you will know that by this time in the story, Jesus has been forsaken by his disciples, by the Jewish religious leaders, the people of the community who knew him and who had followed him, and the only ones that really seem to remain faithful and have any clue as to who Jesus is or what is going on is a Roman centurion who, as Jesus took his last breath on the cross, said, Truly, this man was God's son. There was also Joseph of Arimathea, who had faith in the coming kingdom of God. And then the women, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, Salome, and Joseph. They are the ones, according to Mark, who came early on that first day of the week, Sunday at sunrise to anoint the dead body of Jesus. But even these women's loyalty to Jesus is called into question 
according to the earliest manuscripts of Mark's gospel, after being told by this young man to go and tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus had risen, what did the women do? They fled. They ran away from the tomb. And according to the gospel writer, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. I know, I know, if you're looking at your Bibles right now and you're reading the Gospel of Mark with me today, then you know that there are additional verses that have been added to the end of Mark. Verses 9 through 20 were added to Mark's manuscripts about 200 years after the first writing. The shorter ending, the second half of verse 8, well, that was only added about 400 years after the original manuscript. The women running away, unknowing and afraid, should not surprise you or me or the readers of Mark's gospel. Because the way Mark writes, the only ones who truly know what's happening with Jesus, how things turn out with Jesus, who Jesus really is, well, is only Jesus. Everyone else in Mark's gospel rarely, if ever, get it right. These women are living between the death and the resurrection. They're living between not knowing and what is to come. Living between, as you and I would say, between the now and the not yet. That space of unknowing, and it's a hard place to be. We, you and I, have been in that space for over a year. Last Easter, think about it. Well, it was as if it never even happened for us because we, as a church and as a community, were simply not able to gather together because of the fear of death that was brought on by an out-of-control virus. We have spent a year attempting to emerge from what has felt like a tomb. The more people get vaccinated, the more government COVID restrictions are lifted, well, the more we can gather and the more we can go about our living. But many of us, like the Marys at the empty tomb, still feel afraid uneasy to go about our living. That is where the two Marys were, between the now and the not yet, pondering as they stood there listening to the good news that this young man, this angel, shared with them. Do not be afraid, he said. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Now, these women were wise women. The survival rate of those who were crucified is far less than those who have had COVID. The survival rate of those crucified, 0%. The angel said, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, dead, buried. It is three days later, and the angel announces that he's been raised. He's, he's not here. <laughs> he's not here among the dead. He's gone forth among the living. And still these women, like you and me, dwell in that land between now and not yet. They've heard the good news that everything is beginning to return to normal, and yet they are afraid to live into what they've heard. As if the angel recognizes they need more evidence, they say, he says, look, there is the place that his body was laying. It's not here. The dead Jesus had been laid on that slab in that tomb, and now that tomb is empty. The increase in vaccines for us means fewer sick beds that we will be lying on. 
this is our now. The reality that we can live in. We can leave our sick beds behind, but not recklessly. Carefully. Carefully we leave our sick beds behind, living in such a way that we intentionally look after the well-being of those around us as well as ourselves. That's why we wear our masks to even today. The not yet of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary was how to go about living in this world that had been open to them in the resurrection. The angel said to them, go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. That's the ending that was added to the story. And Jesus had told them that this is what would happen. His conquering of death was reality. He was risen and he is alive. But there are still steps that have to be taken. Steps, you say? Yes. You have to go. Go, he said to the Marys. Go and tell the disciples. So there's the going and there's the telling. But mind you, there is the going again that has to happen. The going to an old place, to Galilee, to live a new life, a resurrected life with a resurrected Jesus. This was their not yet. It is also our not yet. We have survived a worldwide pandemic as a church. Our God has been with us. Jesus has brought us through alive as a church. And Jesus has and is going ahead of his church. And if we want to see Jesus, we cannot return to the tomb. We have to go where Jesus is, where Jesus calls us to be. Yes. Yes, for all of us here watching today, there will be old familiar places that we are called to live in, in new ways. Will it be scary? Sometimes, yes, sometimes. They fled the tomb for fear and amazement seized them. Those two, fear and amazement, live side by side. That too should sound familiar to you and to me. But the first step, the first step we have to take is to move beyond the tomb. Perhaps for a season, perhaps, like Mary and Mary, we will need to move a bit slower in order to come to terms with and to move beyond our own fears. The Marys, according to the earliest manuscript, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. But there will come a time when the not yet becomes the now. I am certain of this. How can I be so sure? Because somehow, someone moved beyond their fear and they began to share the good news. And that good news spread from Galilee throughout the world, across the centuries, to these disciples that are watching here with us today, who are yet again called to go and to tell. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Glory to God. Amen. When we are all despairing, when the world is full of grief, when we see no way ahead, and hope has gone away. Roll back the stone. Although we fear change, 
although we are not ready, although we'd rather weep and run away, roll back the stone. stone. Because we're coming with the women, because we hope where hope is vain, because you call us from the grave and show us the way. Roll, Roll back the stone. stone. Thank you so much for joining us this Easter Sunday morning at Grove United Methodist Church. We do have a few announcements for you all, the first of which is that Book Club will meet this Monday at 6.30 p.m. We have two weeks left on our book, America's Original Sin, by Reverend Jim Wallace. Also on Fridays at 9 a.m., we have Gardeners in the Grove, which has a short devotional, and then you can go out and garden out in the church grounds. We do have a new Bible study beginning April 28th from 6 to 7.30 p.m., that is Wednesday, and it's based off of the letter of James. That will be a hybrid book study, uh, which will either be in Zoom or on Zoom or in person. As well as this spring, we will be starting what is called a Christ Walk, which is an exercise devotional program, a 40-day spiritual fitness program starting this spring. So if you're interested in being a part of that, you can contact myself or contact the church office. As well as we will be having a new summer study in May entitled Mothers in Israel, Methodist Beginnings Through the Eyes of Women. And we will be having a second go around of our Disciples Path Bible study that will occur in the summer as well. So stay tuned to all of those great things. And if you have any questions about them, or if you would like to be involved in them, please contact the church office. As always, you can go to our church website, groveumcradford.com, for more information about all the things going on in this church. We hope you have a great week, and we will see you next Sunday. Before we leave today, I want to say a personal thank you to two of our members, Hattie and Ovella, for the bulletin board for Easter that will greet you on your way in and send you out in God's love. Let us go forth in the love of our risen Savior to tell others the good news. And as we go, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.